Hey, what's up guys? It's Ryan. I'm back with another video in my new endurance series and today we're talking about technical trail running. Okay, so technical trail running. Everyone has a little bit of a different definition of what that might be, depending on where you're from, what your experience is, what type of races you've done in the past, how often you get out on the trail, everyone has a different opinion on what technical means. For me, coming from Indiana, my view is gonna be a lot different than someone coming from some other part of the country or the world. Around here, we don't have a whole lot of buffed out, smooth dirt trails that you can run with like racing flats on. We have a lot of rocky, rooty, uneven trail. As most of you know, I did Grindstone 100 this past year, and that was just beast coast, technical, gnarly, rocks everywhere, there was parts of that race where I swore I hadn't seen dirt in like an hour because it was just all rocks. So with that said, I just want to get that out of the way. Everyone has their own view of what technical means, but we shouldn't get all hung up on that because there are a lot of things that we can all do to help ourselves become better technical trail runners. So in this video, I've got five ideas of things that pretty much anyone can do to help them become a better technical trail runner. So the first thing that anyone can do is incorporate plyometrics and balance into their daily or weekly training routines. Plyometrics is basically jumping and landing to make that really simple. And balance, what I mean by that is just lots of like single leg drills. With my athletes, we do this thing every week called the organ stability routine. And it's basically about eight exercises that you can do in your living room. It's basically a lot of single leg drills, squats, leg lifts, jumps. And what this does is it really works on your hips and your knees and your back and gets your whole body engaged in using one one leg to keep your balance. I don't know if you knew this, but when you're running, you're only on one leg at a time. And I'll put a link to the organ stability routine down below, but basically it's just single leg drills, do it in your living room, do it in your kitchen, put on the TV. It's not that complicated. And as you're doing these exercises, they'll get easier and easier. I've got this 25 pound kettlebell and that helps um, make the exercises a lot harder. Tough as crap to do if you do them right, but they really, really help out. The other thing that I mentioned was plyometrics. Basically think box jumping but you can do it anywhere you can do it on any surface it doesn't have to be a box it's just practicing that jumping and landing and absorbing shock so incorporating these balance drills and plyometrics will really get your legs ready to be out on the trail for miles and miles on that technical stuff that we all see in those magazines and videos and we all love number two is to pick a couple of your workouts and schedule them based off of uh, either vertical gain or just time out on the trail. A lot of people want to go out there and schedule a five mile run, a 10 mile run, 20 mile run, whatever. Take some of your runs on your weekly schedule and just put a time on there. Put two hours on there, two and a half hours. 90 minutes, whatever it is. Or go out there and say, I'm gonna hit 3,000 feet today. Don't worry about miles at all because with technical trail running, a lot of times you're going up and down, steep stuff. You gotta get out there and you gotta get that vertical. You gotta get that hard stuff. You're not gonna be out there running seven, eight minute miles all the time. So don't beat yourself up about only going out there for a couple miles, but make sure that you can put a couple workouts on your schedule based off of vertical gain or time on your feet. Idea number three that I have to help you improve as a technical trail runner is to increase your cadence when you're running. There are so many benefits to increasing your cadence. A lot of people say it reduces the risk of injury. It also does help you make you run faster. But another thing is when you're out on that technical trail, the quicker steps you're taking, the more opportunities you have to adjust your weight, your balance, move from one spot to another, jump from log to log, rock to rock, whatever. And I actually have a tool for this. It's a metronome. I got this off of Amazon. I'll put a link down below. It's just a really cheap little metronome. This one actually you can just clip to your shorts and I wouldn't recommend using this around any humans or animals because it is annoying as crap. But this tool was incredible for helping me increase my cadence. Well, you just set it to whatever you want. Right now I've got it set to 180 beats per minute, 90 strikes with each foot per minute. Pretty good goal to have for yourself. I've coached a lot of people who come to me and they're cadence is around 120, 130, and that's pretty slow. Up to a certain spot, the faster you can get it, the better. Right around 180 is like the sweet spot. So this is what it does. 
really annoying, right? Start it a little bit slower, start at maybe 160, work your way up to 180. It almost forces you to run with the exact cadence that you plug in. It's amazing, I would really recommend picking that up. It's gonna help you improve your cadence. When you improve your cadence, you give yourself more opportunities to correct mistakes that were made with the last foot strike in case you're stepping on a loose rock and making turns downhill especially the higher your cadence the better so pick one of these up increase your cadence number four don't try to step on all the rocks and roots i know it's super fun sometimes you feel like superman when you're jumping from rock to rock root to root and you're jumping but a lot of them are loose so they look perfectly stable and as soon as you step on it it just completely collapses under your weight it's really fun to hit them all but just don't. At Grindstone, as we were going up some of these mountains, the higher you got, the less stable the rocks were. They were just basically plates stacked on top of each other and they were just moving everywhere. In Grindstone, you actually didn't have an option. You have to step on rocks because there's like no dirt for miles. When you're just on your typical trail, you don't have to step on all the rocks and roots. Sometimes dirt is your best friend. A lot of times it's the most stable place to step. If you accidentally hit that rock or root wrong, you've got a twisted ankle. And a lot of us run alone out on the trail. I've never experienced this, but it's probably not the most fun thing in the world to crawl for a couple miles because you can't put any weight on one of your ankles. Get yourself a nice pair of trail shoes so you're not slipping all over the place. Got that nice tread, good rock plate in there, hold your foot secure in the upper. Get some gaiters too, those always help. You won't get as many rocks and dirt in your shoe. And the last thing, my fifth idea to help you become a better technical trail runner is to, and this is going to sound really general, but just respect the trail. The trail is a gnarly place. It is not like a sidewalk. There are dangerous things all around, so approach every trail run with respect. If you're in a race and you're behind a couple guys or girls and they start bombing down a hill and you're not totally comfortable with going that speed, slow down a little bit. Take your time. Trail running for 99% of us is not about getting to the finish line first. It's about the experience. It's about being out there. It's about having fun. It's about being in nature. So don't get yourself hurt by doing something you shouldn't do. Take your time, slow down a little bit. If you're on a trail that you've been on a hundred times, go for it, bomb down that hill. Take that gnarly trail and just shred it. Not everyone can do what we do. It can be dangerous at times. And for a lot of us, a little bit of fear is healthy. That's why we do some of this crazy stuff. That's why we push our bodies to the limit. That's why we climb mountains. But when we get to that point and everyone's been there where we're doing something stupid that we shouldn't be doing, just hold back a little bit, respect the trail. Give it the time it deserves, get to the end of the run, make it to that finish line. Pretend for a second that you're a beginner and this is your first time out there and approach that technical downhill or those rocks and roots with just a little bit extra respect. Get to the finish line, don't sacrifice everything you've put into it just so that you can bomb down that hill a little faster. If you're not shooting for a podium, your goal is to go out there and push your body to the limit. Find out what you're made of and have fun. So there you go five little ideas of things that you can do to make yourself a better technical trail runner. If you like this, hit the like button, subscribe, talk to me in the comments. I love going back and forth with you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm really excited to continue this endurance series. I've got a lot of really good ideas for future videos. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.